if we have a dystocia where we have one leg retained, a posterior leg, um, we can correct that posterior leg malpositioning and bring it into the birth canal for posterior presentation delivery, which can occur in our bovine. In order to correct this leg back, what we do is we approach the birth canal with our more dominant hand that we like to work with because you're going to need a lot of strength to utilize. So we're going to search for our tibia, um, identifying the leg as we go along beyond the femur and the stifle until we reach the tibia. And once we have the tibia, we want four fingers around it and the thumb underneath trying to touch your fingers. In that case, that gives us a really good grip on this calf's leg and what we will do is actually bring this calf towards the birth canal, this leg towards the birth canal in this fashion. At some point, you're going to have to rest. The calf's leg is now a little bit closer to being corrected, so that's all very good, but we haven't completely corrected this situation. The next step to correct, finish correcting this the retention of the hind leg is to grasp the metacarpal area. Now, what you can do, sorry, metatarsal bone. What you can do is actually slide off of the tibia onto the metatarsal bone. Again, you're going to want to grab a hole of the metatarsal bone real strong with four fingers and a thumb and hang on to that metatarsal bone in order to correct that position. So, what you end up doing, excuse me, I'm going to have to edit. This is why we shouldn't have phones. <laughs> there, I said it. <laughs> so once we have found the metatarsal bone, then we have to bring the calf's foot into the birth canal. Another way you can find the metatarsal bone is if you don't slide directly off the tibia onto the metatarsal, what you can do is come out, rest, go back in and slide along the side again until you get to the metatarsal bone, just below the hock and then you want to turn your hand over so that you can have four fingers around the metatarsal bone and thumb trying to connect below and getting a really good grip on the metatarsal bone. Once you have a really good grip on the metatarsal bone, you're going to have to repel the calf back. So you're going to have to take your other arm and push the calf other leg in or use the hind end of the calf, the tail head, to push the calf in. And once you're pushed the calf in, you're going to bring this calf's leg up in this position. Remember that the length of the calf from toe to point of the hock is longer than the diameter of the pelvic inlet and you can cause a tremendous, a, a tremendous damage to the cow if you don't pay attention to that length discrepancy. The one thing that happens quite frequently is if you try to correct this in a straight up and down method, you end up having this hock if you continue to pull in a straight up or down, this hock will actually split the dorsal uterus, uterine wall there at the body of the uterus and you can drive this hock completely through the uterine wall and that is detrimental to the cow's life actually. Not many cattle survive that, that situation so we have to avoid doing that. The way that we avoid doing that is we have to give us plenty of room to repel the calf's stifle or point of the hock back towards the cow's head. So again, you're going to push back. At the same time you push back and you can use both hands or you can use your hand on the metatarsal bone. You're going to push back. You're going to have to slide your hand up underneath the feet to protect the point of the claws and the entry of the feet into the birth canal so we don't do any damage to the ventral body wall, um, vaginal wall. And as we pull back, push back, on the calf, the, the point of the hock, we actually can then bring the calf's feet into the birth canal and correct it that way. And once we have both feet into the birth canal, then we can actually pull, pull this calf out in a posterior presentation.